We have projected that that we believe that that the consumption of of renewable uh, road transportation fuels or uh, renewable diesel, uh, as well as uh, sustainable aviation fuel, will probably go up to something like 30 million tons uh, by by 2030. So we are seeing a, a significant growth in in in, in these areas going forward. Neste is Finland's second largest company and is internationally acclaimed for its transformation to become a world leader in renewable and circular solutions. Last year the company was also elected to the New York Stock Exchange Dow Jones prestigious sustainability index. But how will the journey continue for Neste and how does a fuel company view the development of electric and hydrogen vehicles? Let's listen to Carl Nyberg, Executive Vice President for Renewable Road Transportation at Neste. Welcome to Railers Play, Carl. Nice to have you on the show. Thanks, Jesper. Very nice to be here with you. Carl, uh, we're still in a pandemic. Um, how, is, uh, how has it affected the giant company, uh, Neste? Well, of course, I mean, uh, we are a global company and... and, uh, and um, and of course, the, a pandemic of, of this magnitude has, has a big, big impact on in any industry. Uh, I would have to say that that especially uh, uh, on the on the traditional oil oil side, it, it has been a, it was a very tough a tough year for us uh, with with margins uh, being quite quite weak. On the other hand, we managed to cope rather well in 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 the renewable sides of the business, and and uh, we we managed to to still uh, uh, pr- get, produce a, a quite a good result, and um, and throughout the pandemic, we we were able to operate and deliver uh, to our customers uh, in accordance with with our commitments, and and um, of course with with uh, with, with a, we are being a value driven company. Um, our values to, to care about our, our, our people and our, our, our customers is, is, is also central for us and 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 and, and ensuring the, the well-being and the the, the, the people for the people that are surrounding us and our customers is, is of utmost importance. Mm. Uh, Neste has been a traditional oil company called but but you have uh, successfully transformed to become a world leader in renewable and circular solutions. Uh, can you tell me about that journey? Yes, I mean, I have to say I'm, I'm privileged in, in the sense that I've been working for more than 15 years with the company and, and, and I've seen the, the transformation that we've gone through. And, and, and like you say, we, we started off as a, as, a, as a regional oil refinery in the Baltic Sea region and, and today we are the largest, uh, world's largest producer of renewable diesel. And um, I have to say that, that, um, that we have, I mean, the background of this is the, is the innovativeness of our, our, our people and our organization to, to, to develop uh, new ways of refining uh, and, and actually then eventually developing uh, the next BTL technology, which is our own proprietary technology, which, which uh, enables the conversion of, of oils and fats to, uh, to molecules that can be replacing uh, fossil uh, hydrocarbons in, in the fuels, but also in materials in the, in the, in the future. Mm. A big step on that journey was when you decided to, to close the giant uh, Nantali oil refinery due to reduced uh, demand for fossil fuels. Uh, what will happen to Nantali? Well, um, in, in Finland, our, our uh, fossil oil refining has been concentrated uh, exactly like say, to, to two sites, uh, the Nantali refinery and Podova refinery. And, and uh, last autumn, we, we took the decision to uh, restructure our oil uh, Product, oil products um, uh, refining uh, capacity and um, to, to secure the, 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 uh, the validity and, and the, the uh, performance of, of that part of the business for the, for the long term. And we decided to, as a consequence, uh, uh, close down the Nantel refinery, and which will happen uh, now in, in March uh, 21. Um, uh, as part of that, we are also then uh, we will also then uh, transform our our uh, fossil refinery in Porvo towards uh, processing more renewable materials. So it's also part of this journey, which we are on, you know, to um, to to move our business from from a fossil uh, base towards more uh, renewable and circular uh, solutions. Mm. 
Uh, you're the world's largest producer of renewable diesel. What do you think about the demand for that type of diesel in the future? So, uh, if we look at, at the world which is surrounding us currently, so we 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 are certainly certainly moving in a direction where where uh, where it's becoming increasingly clear that that um, that um, uh, climate change is 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 becoming a, a bigger and bigger threat, and that that also means that we need to rethink that how how we are how we are consuming and how we are um uh, operating in different parts of of the world and and of course uh the, the segment of transportation is 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 a large source of uh carbon dioxide uh, emissions uh, uh ensuring that we that we are, are able to to shift uh away from uh, the fossil based um uh, approach will require a number of different different solutions and and here um, the demand for renewable diesel is is likely to to be growing quite significantly over the over the coming years. We have projected that that we believe that that the consumption of 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 um, of uh, renewable uh, road transportation fuels or uh, renewable diesel, uh, as well as a sustainable aviation fuel, will probably go up to something like 30 million tons uh, by by 2030. So we are seeing a, a significant growth in in in, in these areas going forward. Mm. Uh, do you see electric and hydrogen vehicles as a threat to Nestle's business? Well, I, I would not say see it as a threat. I mean, I think that that the challenge that we have in front of us is is so huge that we will need a multitude of different solutions. So, I mean, today the world is consuming about 900 million tons of diesel on an annual basis, and 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 to replace that uh, fossil fuel demand will require a number of different solutions where I see that a renewable diesel obviously have a very, very important uh, role there. But but it's also evident that uh, electrification, especially when it comes to uh, the private car sector, will be of, of, of a very important uh, role. Uh, we will also see hydrogen playing an important role as well as probably other solutions as well. So. So we do not really see that these other technologies are, are a threat. Uh, in fact, we are also looking into, into um, future platforms that we might will be developing ourselves as well, for instance, uh, surrounding hydrogen. So, so, um, so we, we really see that these are, are complementing each other and, and we will see that different solutions will uh, suit different parts or different segments of, of, of the transport, uh, transport sector. So, so so, so my answer would be no. So Neste is actually considering to getting into the hydrogen business as well. Well, certainly. I mean, uh, as part of our uh, aspiration to become a leader in renewable and circular solutions, uh, I think we we have to also uh, understand that that you know that there there will be a, a multitude of, of 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 technologies that that will could be a part of the portfolio for us in in the future. So we are investing heavily also in, in innovation currently and we are looking into into the new technologies and and uh, uh, that are, are are emerging and and hydrogen being obviously one of them as well and we are actually doing some some piloting on on, on, on green hydrogen currently mm, interesting uh carl nest depends on the transportation industry such as airline companies of course but right now the planes are basically on the ground when do you think the transport industry will be back on track again well, first of all, I would say that if you look, if you talk about the transport uh, industry, I, I would say that that it has been on track uh, through uh, throughout the pandemic. Uh, I mean, if if you look at the heavy duty segments on on the roads, I mean, it, it never really stopped. You know, it it we, we the we certainly saw uh, when when the big lock, lockdowns during the spring uh, came in, we saw a, a, a lot of uh, reduction in demand on the on the. On the on the private uh, car sector, for instance, but but the heavy duty uh, uh, was there almost throughout the pandemic at at uh, at a quite quite uh, good level. So we had good demand for for diesel and renewable diesel. Uh, when it comes to the aviation sector, it is clear that that that, that the aviation sector has taken a, a large beating here. Uh, and and but we are also we believe that you know when the vaccination will roll out here, that we will see again. Um, 
uh, some some kind of return to normal here and and um, obviously might not be the same kind of volumes that we saw the pre pre pandemic but but nevertheless we believe that that it will be returning mm-hmm. um, and and actually I think if if you look at what 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 happened during the the pandemic is that that um, in contrary uh, to to that to some fears that you know that the ambition level when it comes to to um, uh, to, to uh, fighting the, the the climate change crisis, we have actually seen that 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 this pandemic and this crisis has actually strengthened the will to actually start addressing the climate crisis in, in a completely different manner, and that is actually now translating also to to, to more ambitious uh, targets, um, both when it comes to, to 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 road fuels, but also when it comes to the aviation sector. And I mean, we have seen, for instance. Um, Sweden and Norway now moving forward with mandates, but we are also seeing similar discussions happening in 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 the in the EU, um, and uh, we also see that um, the aviation industry is certainly taking the the challenge very very seriously. So, so so actually, we we, we believe that that um, that we are on a quite good track actually in 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 that sense currently. Mm. Uh, Carl, uh, Neste is one of Railer's uh, biggest clients. Uh, how would you like to describe Neste's relationship uh, uh, with Railer's? Yeah, thanks. So, so this is of course a, a, a bit of a tricky question for me because I'm I, I'm not working so much directly with Railer's. It's it's um, a lot of the cooperation with between Railer's and Neste is happening through uh, Neste Engineering Solutions. But um, but my understanding of of the relationship is of course that it's it's of a tr- strategic nature. So it's it's a it's a cooperation and and uh, and uh, it's it's I think it's a it's a good cooperation that we have between the companies where we are where we are able to 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 jointly then uh, get um, benefits of working together. Neste is is uh, we have an ambitious uh, development agenda. We are we are uh, currently. And continuously investing in, into our facilities and, and, and running a lot of a lot of projects and and then with Railers' um, expertise, uh, competencies, and capacity, we can even out um, uh, let's say the um, the gaps that that we might have in our own organization. So I, I think it's a it's a it's a very good cooperation and an important one for us also from a strategic nature. Carl, it was very nice having you on the show, uh, even if it's kind of a digital uh, way this time, but I, I hope to come and uh, visit you in real life after this pandemic, if that's okay with you. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Jesper. It was very nice talking to you, and you're more than, more than welcome to come and visit us. Uh, take care, Carl. You too. Thank you. Bye.